you know, I often wonder how the Lord feels about the way we treat him in praise. When uh, I was never a nightclub person, but whenever I would look in the club, walking by, I would see people on the floor dancing. And the thing about the club, and I watched Jump Time with Arthur Ellison, and I watched Soul Train, they were kicking their legs in the air, spinning around on the floor, bopping and jumping and doing the robot. And the, oh, it seemed like nobody was ashamed. They were just on the floor. But uh, when we come to church, nobody hits the dance floor but me. Every now and then, Sister Mutri might hit it. Every now and then, one or two people might hit it. But uh, I was never a nightclub person, so I didn't dance in the club. I have to do all my dancing in church. And the one thing about this carpet with the down, I remember him telling me this carpet would last a long time. Well, I was hoping that he was wrong. Because I was hoping we would shout all over this carpet and just wear it out real fast. But it is amazing how the Lord gives us life, help, and strength. And we don't cut up for him the way we cut up for the devil. Lord, help the church. But I'm grateful for my upbringing because when I was coming up, people didn't mind cutting a step. For the Lord. In the Gospel of John 14, verses 25 through 27, these things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. The world don't give you the peace that I give. The world will tell you to be afraid when I will tell you to be at peace. Give I unto you my peace. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Now, anyone want a copy of this to take to our members who don't come to church? Here it is. You need to take this by all of their homes today. Give it to them. Tell them to read it. Then tell them to call you and let you know what they got out of it. Our subject today is the haves and the have-nots. All right. The haves and the have-nots. The haves are the people who have received the comforter, the Holy Spirit, by baptism, not by word of mouth, not by saying, I have it, but you have received it by baptism, as did the apostles and the other disciples in the book of Acts. They received the baptism of the Holy Ghost by baptism. And once you've been baptized, you know that you've been baptized. All right? And Jesus is saying to his disciples that the Father will send you the Holy Ghost in my name. And the Holy Ghost will teach you everything you need to know. He's going to teach you by way of sending you teachers He's going to teach you by bringing things to your remembrance. But you're going to be all right with the Holy Ghost. Be at peace. My peace I give to you. The world won't give you peace. The world will tell you to be afraid. But be at peace with the Lord. David said, I've learned to be at peace with God. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm at peace. Because I know my Redeemer lives. Uh, the haves and the have not. The, uh, the have-nots are the people who don't <laughs> have the witness living on the inside of them and who lack understanding of the things of God. 
because they don't have the heart teacher, which is the Holy Ghost. They don't have the mind regulator, which is the Holy Ghost. It is important. That's why Jesus asked the Father to give us the Holy Ghost. Send the Holy Ghost in my name, Father, because my people need to know who their comforter is. A comforter is someone who comforts you. During the time of trouble, I'm comforted. Therefore, my heart is not troubled because I have a comforter. When people lack understanding, I have an understanding because I have a comforter who won't let me be afraid, who won't let me be confused, who won't let me be dismal because the Holy Ghost lives on the inside of me. Now, the world don't understand the Holy Ghost because the world don't know the Holy Ghost. And when I say the world, I'm talking about people who get their instruction from the world. But people who in the Lord get their instructions from the Lord. That's why when we pray, we listen. We don't do all the talking. We listen for what the Spirit saith to our hearts and saith to our minds. So that we, because why? He orders our steps. Look at some of the halves and determine why many of them, after receiving the baptism, have apparently some things wrong about the teachings of Christ. As we see in the world today, a lot of people claim they have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but some of them are crazy. And the things that they believe, I mean just plain crazy. The Holy Ghost don't make you crazy. The Holy Ghost makes you wise. So whenever you see people that are crazy, it's not God. And mouth will say just about anything. But you got to know the witness to say that's not God. And someone say you're judging. Well, that's what I'm supposed to do. Because the Bible said that the spirit of truth in you will bear witness with the spirit of truth in me. Because spirit knows spirit. I know what I'm talking about. The word uses, the Bible uses the word discern. Discern means it's another word for judge. Yes, when uh, Brother Eddie walks up to the pear tree in his mother's yard or his sister's yard, he looks at the pear tree to determine which pear is ripe for the picking and which one is still green. Now, the pear tree doesn't say to him, Brother Eddie, you judging me? The pear tree just sits there and wait for its fruit to get ripe. I know that I'm telling the truth. And so we ought to know what is of God and what's not of God by the Holy Spirit. If we've been baptized, we have the witness of the Spirit in us. The exposure of cultural teachings will cause people who have received the Holy Spirit to do the things that the culture tells them that are right, and the Holy Ghost not telling them that. The cultural teachings rather than the teachings of Jesus, will give people poor understanding. Preachers who have never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but just preach because they got a license. And now in today's world, anybody can be a preacher overnight. They're giving out preacher degrees like people giving out candy. They got a, a, a young man in Charleston, profane, just got his ankle bracelet off, was in the riots downtown uh, a few months ago when they were rioting and uh, cursed like a sailor, and they making him a bishop. Never been saved. But he gets on Facebook and gets a following and calls himself bishop, and you have some people that don't know no better. Well, we'll come and help you uh, make you a bishop. And it's a shame that the people are giving out these titles like candy. But, and, and it's preachers like me that some people resent, but I thank God for preachers like me who will tell the truth regardless of how people feel about it. Because my job is not to make people feel good, it's to tell them the truth. You know, if you join the army today as an enlisted person, you get stripes. 
You join the Army, they put a stripe on your sleeve or the Air Force or the Marine Corps. If you're an enlisted person that just went to high school, never went to college, they make you an enlisted person, they give you your first strike. Now, what does it look like for you to be in Marine Corps 90 days? You got one stripe and decide, I want to be a four-star general tomorrow. So you go out and you have somebody come and put four stars up on your, on your jacket. That is absolutely ludicrous. The military don't function that way. No man can join the military and be a second lieutenant, the first rank that a person can receive being an officer, and then 90 days later, they are four-star general. That's crazy. But you got people in the church who come to church, and they are not even a minister, and next year, they're an apostle. Woo! And people don't like when I tell them they don't have good sense. Somebody need to tell them. Uh, what causes people to apparently lose what Jesus said the Holy Ghost will do? Bad te preachers. Preachers who don't understand the baptism of the Holy Ghost trying to teach people how to live. Not qualified to teach because they were not properly prepared for the task of teaching. People who are prejudiced, they are not prepared to teach people how to live. Prejudice from thinking that they are better than others because they have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I've seen people like that. Oh, y'all not like them. I've had people tell me, why are you in that AME church? You ought to get out of that church from those people. They don't know, they don't have the Holy Ghost. Well, it seems to me like Jesus said, I've not come to save the people who already save. I've come to save the sinners who need saving. So now, if you say the people out there don't have the Holy Ghost and you got it, it seems like you ought to be over here with me. Get on out of that church. They don't have the Holy Ghost. Well, you didn't have it one time either. But if you got it, then live it. I had a lady text me this morning. Um, Can I wear my collar to the AME church? Just a babe in ministry. But want to wear a collar to church. And I ask her, why do you want to wear the collar? For flesh? Do you want to wear it to show off? I said, you are not a minister in the AME church. You are a minister in the Reformation who ordained you. I am only a minister in the AME church because they gave me my license. They put me through training for ministry. Five years. So they ordained me. I'm not a minister in the Baptist church. I'm not a minister in the holiness church. I am only an ordained minister in the AME church. And of course, this goes to the ignorance of clergy. Because some preachers think because they are a preacher that they should be recognized in any church. Not true. You're only ordained in the Reformation who recognize you as an ordained minister. Reverend Gamble next door is a layperson in the AME church. When he walks through the doors, he is a layperson. That's all he is. Now, if I want to honor him as a neighborhood pastor, I may invite him to my pulpit and let him sit in my pulpit, but I don't have to. Because he is a ordained minister in the Baptist church. Whew. And some people don't like understanding. I, I am an Air Force man. I cannot go to the Army and tell them what to do. I'm a sergeant in the Air Force. I cannot go on an Army base and tell an Army sergeant what to do or an Army corporal because I'm not of that branch. I know that I'm talking right. But if I'm in the Air Force and I'm a sergeant and I got a little two-striper or one-striper or three-striper under me, I can sure enough <clears throat> tell them what to do because I outrank them. My God from Zion. And so the church is supposed to have order. I'm supposed to talk about the haves and the haves not, have-nots. Some people have not good understanding. You're talking about Washington? Yes, I am. Now, what did Jesus teach? 
Jesus says, when the Holy Ghost comes, he will keep you in remembrance to the things I've taught you. He said, go to every nation and baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I come in the name of the Father. I am the Son, and I've asked the Father to send you the Holy Ghost. Go preach my gospel, saith the Lord. Don't preach yours. Because there's no salvation in your gospel. There's salvation in my gospel. Go preach mine and baptize the people. Immerse them in the preaching of the gospel. Immerse them so that why? When you preach the gospel, they might receive what the gospel promises. The baptism of the Holy Ghost. And this is what needs to be preached in all the churches. So that the people can understand that they need the baptism of the Holy Ghost to run this race. To navigate life. You need a teacher on the inside. Because when you don't have a teacher on the inside, you listen to what they're saying over here. You listen to what they're saying over there. And they're crazy. And they're crazy. And if you listen to the crazy people on the right and the crazy on the left, guess what you will be? Oh, y'all got good sense. Y'all got good sense. But it's good to listen to how the Spirit directs the church. I'll never remember uh, the year of one of the storms after Hugo. We were at an annual conference in Sumter. And Bishop Adams said, I'm going to adjourn the conference tomorrow because the storm was on the coast. And the people were leaving Charleston. Boy, they had... The interstate opened, they were just leaving out of Charleston. And uh, my father stayed at home. My father said, nothing's going to happen. My father was a man who had received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They said, oh, we're leaving Charleston. Everybody ought to get out. And my father said, nothing's going to happen. And I'm his son. I had received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I told the bishop, bishop, I'm going to Charleston to see about my daddy. When people were leaving out, I was going in. Why? Because the spirit never told me, don't go. You see, whenever you're led by the Spirit, the Spirit will lead and direct you. When the Spirit says, don't go, don't go. Simple as that. If the Spirit tells you, don't marry that person, don't marry him. But I love him. Bump love. Don't marry him. If the Spirit tells you no, the answer is, God bless your hearts. I'm trying to get to church where the Lord wants us. Because I've listened to my own heart. Your heart, the Bible says, can deceive you. Your own heart can deceive you when you listen to it. Don't listen to your heart. Let the Lord direct you. Because many people have listened to their heart and have been deceived. Am I telling the real truth? The Holy Spirit is a teacher a leader, a guide to those who can and will hear him. He teaches us how to love according to God's will. The Holy Spirit teaches us how to live, how to treat people, how to give, how to worship. But there is one problem. The flesh gets in the way. Flesh don't want you to worship. Flesh will make you sit down there and act stiff. Flesh will make you sit down and stare at the ceiling. Flesh will not make you want to clap your hands. Flesh will not make you want to move your feet. Oh, nasty, wicked, evil, dirty, sinful flesh. Because flesh is subject to be recalcitrant, rebellious against God. That's flesh. My flesh and your flesh. That's why Bible says we walk not according to the flesh, but we walk according to the spirit. When the flesh don't feel like moving, say, flesh, you're going to move the day. Because I'm going to move you. Because you don't rule me, I rule you. You say, flesh, you don't feel like praising God, I'm going to praise in the day. Because I don't praise God based on what flesh tells me to do. And this is why some people that attend church never can go anywhere because they attend church according to the flesh and not the spirit. Lord, I know I'm telling the truth. The solution, here's the solution uh, to the flesh. The Bible says when we are saved, 
when we've received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we have to renew our covenant daily. Renew your walk with the Lord daily. This is why the church have revivals. This is why the church have worship and praise services. So we can renew our spiritual baptism. This is why, why do you think daily we have to bathe the flesh? Because the flesh gets dirty. Even if you don't go outside, you need to do something before you hit the bed. Because there are chemicals in the body. There are toxins in the body that comes out of the flesh. So you better do something because if you don't do something with the flesh, the bed will start smelling like the flesh. Then the room will start smelling like the flesh. Then the whole house will start smelling like the flesh. I know that I'm talking right now. Ah, my God from time. And so you have to renew that covenant. You have to put some water on that body. And the Bible said the word of God is our water. We have to refresh our souls daily. Yes, we do. If we're going to maintain that relationship with the Lord. And this is what we must do in order to be the haves and the have-nots. Uh, the have-nots are at the disposal of the flesh. And Satan to be led by the flesh, rejected of God according to the flesh. The flesh gets embarrassed in church. Who, me? I'm not doing that. I'm not going to be embarrassed. I'm not going to be. That's the flesh talking. The flesh gets tired of doing anything for the Lord. I, 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 they, I'm just tired. I don't feel like doing. I don't feel. That's the flesh talking. The flesh. They get tired of anything that has to do with worship. Anything that has to do with praise, anything that has to do with living right and doing right, they get tired. That's the flesh. But notice how the flesh don't get tired of doing what it wants to do. People who love drinking can drink every day. Seems like they would get tired. You would hope they get tired. You would pray that they get tired, but every day is a new day for them. They go pop a seal or use dope or do whatever they want to do. They seem like they never get tired. People who got a whole monger in spirit, it seems like they would get tired. Well, you done whole monger, but everything in town seems like he would be tired or either wore out. But every day they're looking for new energy to go out and whole monger some more. Y'all don't need to say nothing. Ha, ah, Washington, you want it today. Ah, the flesh, the flesh, the flesh is our enemy when it comes to God. The flesh gets in the way. The flesh is where sin lives, in the flesh. That's why we are taught to walk by the spirit and not the flesh. When Jesus fasted for 40 days, don't think his flesh was in favor of that. His flesh didn't want him to fast. Je the devil came to temper his flesh. The devil says, I know you're hungry. Because I know you're hungry, bow down and do what I say. Jesus said, devil, you're a liar. You're a liar before my fast. You're a liar during the fast. And you're a liar now. I'm never going to do what you say. So just get out of my face. And when the devil realized he couldn't get to Jesus through his flesh, he left him alone. And when the devil can get to you through your flesh, he got you. He got me. If he can get to me through my flesh, he's got me. And when he gets me, then I'll teach you all to live a defeated life. I'll come and tell you where all of us have sinned. And you know what you all will say? Amen. We are all sinners. You know what you all will say? Amen. Uh, God loves everybody. He loves us too, just as we are. You all will say amen. And that is wrong. The Bible says that God hates sin. The Bible says, shall we continue in sin that grace be null and void? No. We are supposed to stop sinning. That's why when Jesus touched the woman who was caught in the act of adultery, he forgave her, and he says, go and do it again. Do it all you want. Just do it over and over again because God loves you just the way you are. But you have some preachers that tell people that, and that's what some people want to hear. So they, hey, man, Reb, you all right now. Now you begin to see why the church is in the condition that it is in. Imagine a child without a teacher. How would they learn? Would they learn how? If a child doesn't have a teacher, you know what they learn from? 
are the children. Because I've been in class, elementary school. We go to class in the morning. Miss Jefferson don't show up. And so we in the class, we got no teacher. So we sit around and listen to other children talk. And we learn from what they're saying. The biggity kids got more mouth, and so they push their way on us. They slap us upside the head and make us do things that they want us to do. Go over there and hit Rosalind. Go over there and hit Sam. Yeah, they Go over there and spit on this one. Go spit on that one. Make a spitball. Shoot it at this one. Shoot it at that. Oh, don't tell me y'all uh, act like y'all were never in school. Uh, y'all not going to get brand new on me. I'm not the only one who went to school and had biggity kids, and they taught some children how to be bad children. How to be bad. And so when you don't have a teacher in life, you learn from other people. And what will people in sin teach you? How to be bigger sinners. People who the doctor says, now, if you hit drugs again, it's going to kill you. You've already worn out your system. If you drink again, it's going to kill you. And when you get around the boys, what do they do? The first thing they do is shove a drink in your face. They know that the doctor said for you not to drink, but they shove run right in your face. And you think that they are your friends. And so now, if that's true in the world, the same thing is true in the church where the people have not received baptism of the Holy Ghost. People who attend church, they're just going to shove their in your face and want you to do what they tell you to do. My God from Zion. People of God, they have a teacher, the Holy Spirit, to speak to our minds and our hearts and guide us in our lives according to God's holy laws and God's judgments. That's what the Holy Ghost does. People without the Holy Ghost to have not don't go anywhere in God they can't because they don't have anything to take them anywhere. When people are in God, they're supposed to grow. When people are in God, they're supposed to see. They're supposed to know how to love, how to forgive, how to instruct. Some people don't like a firm instructor. They like a gentle instructor. All right, but it's not whether the instructor is gentle or firm. It is that they give you the right instructions. You see, and that's the way some people are when they don't have the Holy Ghost. I don't like Reverend so-and-so. His mouth is too sharp. I like Reverend so-and-so because them, they don't never say nothing to hurt your feelings. Now, a person with the Holy Ghost would say, the reverend who don't never say nothing to hurt your feelings, is he helping you to grow in God? Or the person with the sharp mouth, are they helping you to grow in God? Both may be helping you to grow in God. If they do, everything that you eat in life for your health or take don't taste good. But if it's good for your health, you take it because it's good for your health. If somebody's helping my soul to prosper, if they tell me, sit down, you're talking too much, listen, who they think they talk, I'm, I put on my pen. See, that's why they told you sit down, shut up. Because you're bigoty, you run my, uh, sit down, talking too much, listen. Then next, when you listen, you learn. And so next time when you get up, you learn to be silent. Don't speak so much. Let your life live and speak for you. That's all they were trying to tell you. But so many people get on faith. Oh, I don't like the way they talk to me. Uh, some doctors don't talk to you with good bedside manner. But if you got cancer, they say, you got cancer. Now, you got it just as much as if the doctor come to you and pet you and give you a lollipop and say, um, baby, uh, you got the big C. You got it just as much as the doctor who told you you got cancer as the one who gave you a lollipop and pat you on your shoulder. <sighs> I know I'm telling the truth. My God, the haves and the have-nots. Don't worry, I'm getting to the end of this. People without the Holy Spirit don't go anywhere in God. They don't. They're the same level 
Now, you see them five years from now, they're at that same level. You see them 10 years from now, they're at the same level. They don't grow. We have some people in this church. They're at the same level when I came here in 2014. They're at that same level now. As a matter of fact, I might be wrong. They might have slipped and went to a lower level. Why is that? Because of this. They don't want to hear the word. When the word is being preached, they block it out. The Bible called those kind of people reprobate people. Reprobate people you can't help. Because their mind is made up to do things their way. They don't care what God say. They don't care what the preacher say. They don't care what nobody says. They're going to do what they want to do. Whew. I was driving to church this morning, and I said, you know what? I said, if I ever lived after another church, this one, if I go to another assignment, one of the things that I want to do is get a whip, just like the one they use on the plantation. And I want to bring it to church, and I want to hang that up in the and I want all of our people every Sunday to look at that whip. They can even touch it. They can touch the edges of it where it was flared and where they put wire in it to make it cut into your skin. I want them to touch all of that. And so when they come to church, they can thank God that they're no longer on the plantation under the whip. They need to see that. They need a reminder. Look where he brought you from. Whew. My God, I need to get one for Lebanon. I got some people I might need to use that whip on. I know I'm talking right here now. People say, yeah, you let Reb do that. I'll sue him for everything he got. Yeah, go right on. People without the Holy Spirit don't go anywhere in God. They don't. They're not going nowhere. Uh, the have-nots have no faith. That's why they can't go nowhere. They got no faith in God. They only have belief in God, but no faith. Because you'll never experience the power of God unless you have faith in God. I know that I'm telling the truth. I have a member right in here who the doctor said, you got cancer. The member said, well, I got cancer. I don't doubt that I have it. The doctor said, I've got it. The doctor is a doctor. They went to medical school. My job is now, what do I do since the doctor diagnosed me? Do I go home and drink a fifth every day because I have cancer? Or do I have faith in God to get me above the cancer? So now what I'm going to do is rather than turn to a fifth, I'm going to turn to God and say, Lord, I've been believing in you, but now I have a trial in front of me. It takes faith, and now I'm going to believe you to get me above what the doctor said. I don't doubt that I have it, but I know that you can take me over it. My God, I'm one of the ones who have. I'm not one of the have-nots. I'm just not a person who got belief that there's a God. I want to know that there's a God. Only God can take you out of a bad situation like that. A fifth of liquor can't do it. Drugs can't do it. People talking about you can't do it. You got to have faith in God who's able to work the supernatural for you. My God from Zion. I heard someone said, the Lord healed me. Well, the Lord opened my understanding because the Holy Ghost is a teacher. The, ho the Lord said, now, there are some people who says, I healed them. He says, I didn't heal them. They were cured. Because now, anytime you take medication for your illness and the medication work, that's also an extended grace of God because you've been cured through the medication. Now, when the Lord heals you, he touch you. And when he touch you, you made whole. My God from Zion. But I say it this way, Lord, any way you fix it, I'll be satisfied. If you touch me and heal me, I'm going to rejoice. If you allow me to be cured, I'm still going to rejoice because it's only by your grace and mercy. My God from Zion. Oh, yes, the haves and the have-nots. Yes, the have-nots have no faith in God. No, they got none. Uh, can or will you go on a trip without a guide? Who will go on a trip to Mexico and you don't have a guide? You don't have nothing to tell you 
how to get to Mexico. You, you sitting in your car, got it packed up with your luggage, and you say, now I'm going to Mexico. Which way do I go? Do I go down Charleston Way? Do I go to Columbia Way? Do I go North Carolina? Which way do I go to go to Mexico? Do I go through King Street? How do I go to go to Mexico? Well, if you're going to go with God, if you plan to go to heaven when you die, you got to have a guide to tell you which way to go. That's why Jesus said, I'm leaving you. I'm your guide. But don't worry. I'm going to ask the Father to send you a comforter. And he will teach, lead, and guide you. He's going to show you which way to go. My God, you can't follow Jesus going to the nightclub. He's not in the nightclub. Get out of there. Well, I'm going to go to heaven through the nightclub. Me and Percy Sledge and, yeah, old Marvin Gaye and, Roberta Flack and the, 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 uh, the, the, the five, uh, Jackson Five, boy, we're just going to have a time in the nightclub. We, I'm going and we're going we're gonna to use Falstaff and Old Milwaukee and, 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 and Light Bear. And we're just going, I'm going to heaven from here. And I'm going to die in the nightclub. And I'm going to heaven. I'm dying drunk. I'm going to heaven. Well, no, you're going to find yourself in hell. Because that's not the way the Spirit of the Lord leads you. My God, no, beloved, if you're going to heaven, he's going to tell you, rather than going in the nightclub, why don't you minister to the man who owns the club and tell him you've been selling old Milwaukee, but I'm going to tell you about an old walk with Jesus that'll make everything all right. <laughs> My God, you've been selling light beer for Miller. But I'm going to tell you about a light that is born from Jesus. Ah, my God. You've been selling coat 45. But I'm going to tell you about a coat 66. I know I'm preaching right now. Oh, yes, beloved. When the nightclub man get baptized in the Holy Ghost, He'll take out the old jukebox. He'll take out all the beer out of the cooler. He'll take down Johnny Walker Red. He'll take down Jack Daniels. You know, Johnny Walker was on his trusty board, and Jack Daniels was on his steward board. And old Henny, old Henny was on the usher board. But he says, I'm going to take all them officers down, and I'm going to put up Jesus. I'm going to turn the nightclub. It used to be up jump the devil. And now I'm going to turn it into the house of prayer because I've received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to tell all my customers who used to come here for Johnny Walker and come here for the old Red Bull. I'm going to tell them you ought to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. My God from Zion. Yes, beloved. I know I'm preaching right right now. I'm going to tell the old backslidden preacher that used to come here to get a drink. Reb, you ought to drink from the fountains that are never run dry. Reb said, what happened to the nightclub? Club. I used to come here to get a drink before I preach. He said, well, Reb, you can still get a drink. You can get a drink right now. But the drink that I've got for you is nothing but the blood of Jesus that'll wash away your sin. And if you want to preach, you can preach right now when you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. My God from Zion. Yes, beloved. The haves and the have-nots. Ah, look at this thing now. My daughter called me the other day. My daughter said, Daddy, she said, I need to talk to you. I said, well, Tina, I just pulled up at the Fresh Market store, and I want to go inside. She said, oh, man, Daddy. Oh, man. I said, well, baby, I got to run in the store. I say, call me when you get through eating your Indian food. My God from Zion. So I, I went home and ate my Chinese food while she was eating up in Virginia her Indian food. And after a while, the phone rang. It was my oldest daughter. She said, Daddy, the Lord showed me a dream. 
She says, I saw this cross, and the cross was covered in blood. She said, the top of the cross was not there, but she said, the T-bar on the cross was there, and the flank that goes down of the cross was there. And she said, my job was to clean the blood off of the cross. And she said, Daddy, I saw a door, and the door was a white door. And the door had looked decayed, and the door was half open. And she said, I looked at the door, and I wondered about that door. Then she said, I saw my brother, uh, Maurice. I didn't know who it was, but he came, and he had a hoodie on his head. And his head was down. And I kept saying, who are you? Who, who is that? And he wouldn't look up so I could see his face. And she kept inquiring, who are you? Who? And then he finally looked up and she saw it was my oldest son, Maurice. Then Maurice had with him a young boy. And the young boy was just running his mouth, just chattering, chattering, wouldn't shut up. She said, shut up, you talk too much. And he just kept his mouth chattering. And she said, the only way I could get him to stop was to pop him in his mouth. She said, Daddy, what does the dream mean? Well, I went in my little office and I said, the cross represents a charge to you. The key that is in need of repair. And your ministry is to help souls who are lost. Their blood is on your hands. You've got to do what the Lord is calling you to do. I said, my son in the dream is not my son. He is the spirit of deception that has come into the church. That's why the door was decayed and it was half open. The spirit of deception had gotten into the church. The young boy whose mouth was running, that spirit is the spirit of chatter that's in the church. The church making noise, but it's got no power. Everybody got a word. They got a conference over here and a conference over there. Oh, I got a word from the Lord. That is nothing but the spirit of chatter, but there is no power. And I said, now, the Lord is calling you to do a serious work. I said, now, she said, but daddy, what do I do? I said, stay right where you are and get your instructions from the Lord. I said, if he don't tell you to move, you stay right there. I said, because he is preparing you. He's fixing you because the ministry you've got to go to is a difficult one. It's hard because people are going to resent you when you try to bring order to disorder. She said, Daddy, she started crying. She started speaking in tongues. She said, Daddy, the Lord show me things. And I thought about one of my members who told me what the Lord showed her the other day after Bible study. She said, the Lord showed me the bishop, one of the bishops, was going to die. And I went to the bishop and I told him what the Lord said. You got to get it in order. And he said, no, that's not the Lord. I'm not going to die. She said, two weeks later, he died. It reminds me of when I was a young teenager when the Lord showed me the church mother, husband was going to die. It wasn't her husband. Death was coming to her house. And I told her, I, I sat at her dining room table. I said, death is coming to your house. She said, oh, boy, you go ahead. I was 16 or 17. She said, you go ahead. That, that, no, 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 I'm not going to receive that. About two weeks later. Her husband, who wasn't sick, came in the hospital, pain in his groin, took him to the hospital, and he died. And she said, that, that boy right there, whatever he tells me, I'm going to believe it. When the Lord shows you something, that means you are a seer. And I said, baby, you are a seer. She said, that's what the Lord told me. I'm a seer. I said, the Lord gave you a night vision. She said, that's what he told me. She, she said, the Lord told me I'm giving you a vision in the night. And there's more calamity coming to the world because the world has offended God. And you know what? It's not the people in the world. It's the people in the church. They have offended 
God. And because the church has offended him, the church has trespassed against him, they're going to see what's going to happen. He is announcing his wrath coming across the land because the people won't repent. They gave them a season to run back to the church houses and fall on their faces and cry out to God and repent for the wrongs that they have done, and they won't do it. They have a window. But what do some of them do? Sit home, watch TV, go to the mall, go to the Walmart, grocery store, wherever they want to go, but won't come to God's wrath come. Where are they going to run? The Lord is sending his warning. And as one of the members told me, sitting in here right now, said the Lord told me families in this church that he has allowed both people who died. She she said he showed me brother so-and-so and and sister so-and-so. And I said, because he showed it to you, it's your responsibility to go to those families and tell them, repent, get it right with God now. Now, why didn't the Lord show me? Because if I go there, they expect me to say something like that. But when the Lord showed it to her, they don't expect her to be the message carrier. But whomever the Lord chooses to use, let him use you. Just make sure it's the Lord using you. I want to be one of the haves and the have-nots. I want to be one of the haves. I, I, I want to be one of the haves because my name has been written on the Lamb's book of life. I've got a seat in the kingdom. They used to sing a song, that's all right as long as my soul gets a seat in the kingdom. Huh? But the have-nots are those persons that written on the Lamb's book of life. They find themselves in a burning hell because they were so rebellious. And people come. I saw one of the ladies at Sister Cooper's walk. And sometimes we're so happy to see people, we just go along to get along. Baby, what you doing here? You won't come to church. You won't listen to the pastor. Why are you here walking for Jesus and your head is so hard? Huh? Why are you out here? You trying to impress us? Why don't you get your little raggedy soul right with God? You hurt my feelings. Baby, I'd rather hurt your feelings than save your soul than to sit here and try to pick flowers with you and you're on your way to hell. Oh, yes, beloved. And this is why I love the old folk who raised us that way. They didn't care nothing about our feelings. They told you what they had to tell you, whether you like it or not, and if you didn't like it, they might slap you right in the mouth. But this generation wants you to please their feelings. Man, later for your feelings. I'd rather tell you, the Lord if it hurts your feelings and you get right with God then I've done right by you hallelujah get right with God and do it now get right with God oh down oh where Get, get right. 